Friends, welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal to observe live surgery. This is a fairly routine case, a soft cataract, posterior subcapsular opacity. And I tried to do pre-chop, but the pre-chop was not good. And now I am trying to do caroseling technique. Just carousel the nuclear mass and do just complete the case. Now see what happens. In a fraction of a second, the posterior capsule is caught and there is a rent. Why did it happen? As I thought again and again, in caroseling technique, I always do hydrodelineation and there is a nice demarcation between the epinuclear sheet and the nucleus. But in this case, I didn't do that. I just did hydrodelineation dissection. I didn't do hydrodelineation. There was no cleft between the nucleus and epinucleus. And as I tried to carousel the whole nuclear mass, the posterior capsule in a fraction of a second came to the phaco needle tip and rent occurred. And now whatever has happened, happened within two minutes of the surgery. And now for the next 30 minutes I had to struggle to, I had to work very hard with great focus to overcome this complication. This is an edited video and you don't have to spend 30 minutes, it has been edited to 8 minutes and I am going to express my thoughts. Please watch this video till the end and at the end you will see the post-op pictures owned I have expressed out the lens matter uh, with visco and now I am doing a side port on the right side at around 8 o'clock and now I am going to do anterior vitrectomy. I use some kenacord and I find that there is vitreous prolapse through the main wound and I have to cut this vitreous. We must have a nice cutter in our operation room. Unless the cutter is good and it is no good. During anterior vitrectomy, the bottle height should be less about 30 centimeter or 40 centimeter. Flow rate is about 40 or uh, 25 to 30 and the vacuum varies from 150 to 200. In this case, it was 175. After antivitrectomy, the cortical cleanup is done. This is an edited video, so you are watching it at a higher speed. And now, after a cortical cleanup, we have to remove the lens matter that has dropped into the vitreous cavity. In this case, I am sure there is some uh, lens matter that has dropped into the vitreous cavity and unless we remove that, the patient will be very much uncomfortable and the patient will not have good visual outcome, the patient will have lot of inflammation in the postoperative period. So I use a trocker for introduction of the irrigation. First I use a sharp needle to create a path and then I introduce the trocker because we reuse these trockers and it gets blunt so we use, I use a sharp needle to create a path and then the trocker. And now I am using irrigation through a limbal root and I am using the cutter through the trocker and there is a epinuclear piece lying over the macula and before I get access to this lens matter I have to remove all the vitreous strands which is around the piece and uh, the piece should be mobile before I want to catch it. Because the uh, Irrigation is through the limbal root. The uh, irrigating contact lens is uh, placed 
in an eccentric way, but still I get good visualization and I can complete the, I can manage the dropped lens matter nicely. And now I remove the tracker which is, which was used for the vitectomy cutter, inject air bubble and then this is a multi-piece acrylic intraocular lens, foldable lens, but I am placing it straight. It goes tight, that means the size of the wound is about 5.75 millimeter, but it goes, first I place the leading haptic over the iris and now gently it goes into the sulcus and now the trailing haptic is placed gently into the sulcus. And now I remove the uh, air bubble and whatever uh, lens matter was sticking to the cornea is removed. Now I inject an air bubble and bit of pilocarpine to constrict the pupil. A single suture with teno nylon is placed at the middle of the main wound which was enlarged to about 5.75 millimeter. This suture should not be neither tight nor loose, it should, that just the lips of the wound should be nicely opposed. And the knot is buried into the sclera. And then we are towards the end of the surgery, this is moxifloxacin. The side ports are closed by hydrating corneal stroma with balanced salt solution. And then a final lavage of the anterior chamber is done. At this time I was sure that there is no vitreous strand and I did not inject Kenacort at this time. Because if I inject Kenacort at this time, a lot of it will go into the vitreous cavity and there is a risk of high intraocular pressure in the postoperative period. And now the case is done, it is concluded and now see the post-op pictures after seven days. Cornea is clear, antechamber is quiet, people is round and central, unaided vision is 6 by 12 and with optical correction it is 6 by 6. Patient is happy but I am also happy now but when it happened, it was a very bad experience. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. It will give you some insights not to cause some such complications in a hurry. We should focus completely onto the surgery. We should not keep anything else in the mind and do a nice surgery. But sometimes it will have an, happen even in experienced hands. In those times, we have to manage it very nicely.